Hello, thank you for joining me today for this painting tutorial. This is Artful with Michelle. I'm going to uh, start by just telling you a little bit about uh, the supplies that we need for this. So this is going to be my little teapot and um, we're using an 8x10 canvas. I have already base coated the background, under coated with burnt umber and I just left the brush strokes very um, visible and kind of swishy. You could do a very smooth coat if you preferred, but for this one I'm just going to uh, let that create the background. For brushes, I'm going to be using my typical number two liner. I have a white pencil also. Um, my number six round. I also am going to show you um, how to shade with an angle brush today. So this is a three quarter inch royal gold. It's just golden and Taclon, all of these are. And this is a half inch flat. You can also shade with a flat brush, but I'm going to use an angle today for a change. Okay, for the paints, I'm using a mix of Blick Acrylic and um, Liquitex Basics uh, because I happen to have both and I'm so I'm using both. Um, and most of them are the same from one brand to the other as far as the colors. So I'm going to be using Burnt Umber, which I did in the background prior to the video, Phthalo Blue, Titanium White, and I'm using a Venetian Red, which is like a red oxide, a rust color, okay? And along with that, I'm going to be using the Liquitex Basics Vivid Red Orange, and I'm using Chrome Yellow and Green Oxide in the Blick Acrylic. If I add any other colors in the course of the video, I will add it to the description. All right, here we go. Let's get started. So for the uh, teapot, I'll draw it quickly. I have a basic outline already on this canvas, so you can either use a traceable or you can draw it yourself. But the, the basic shape is going to start out like an egg. So I'm just going to show you it's kind of in the middle of the canvas, maybe slightly to the left, just because the spout is wider than the handle. So if you want to center it, you could also off offshoot it if you wanted. Um, so, you know, have fun with it and do what you'd like. So I'm going to come and, and do the other side, like an egg. So when you draw it, you could bring it on up and finish your egg top up in here. Okay, and then I also made like a little ball top. In here, I'm creating a rim, which you can round or you can square it off on the edges, whatever you'd like. The handle is just sort of like a C, the letter C. And then I'm going to come in and make the outside of it, and I'm going to come up. And inside, I created two stripes. So you just follow the shape of the um, rim of the lid. I'm going to turn it upside down to do, or sideways sort of, to do this one. And I'm just going to draw another one. Okay, and then the spout, you can change up also, however you'd like. But I have it down um, where the stripe is here. I come up and curve out a little bit. I go up and come down and go up. Okay, so just kind of have fun with that. Um, I don't put a lot of time into the drawing on the video because you can also use a traceable. And any other lines that I had drawn before that I don't want, I can just erase later. Okay, let's start the fun part. So um, use your largest flat brush for your background. So the one I have handy is a half inch. So I'm going to wet that and touch it on my paper towel. Okay. So I am going to take the rusty color, Venetian red, red oxide, whatever you're using, and I'm going to just start swishing it in the background. Okay. And I like to let some of that undercoating show through. Before I get close to the teapot, I'm going to dip into that vivid, um, vivid red orange, and I'm going to blend it out into the darker color and bring it in closer to the teapot. 
and I'm going to continue that all around. So I'm just going to go right up to my pencil line. You can use um, regular lead pencil also um, because you can still see it over dark colors. Sometimes you just have to tip the canvas a little bit. Okay, so closer to the teapot, I'm using the brighter orange, which is really going to let that brown undercoating show through. And you can come in and you can make that orange brighter later if you um, don't like the effect of having that much undercoating showing through. I kind of like it. I think it's fun. I'm going to turn this upside down or a little bit of on an angle there. And get that bright color around my teapot. Again, as I brush out closer to the edge, I'm going to add more of that rusty red. Now remember to also go in and paint inside the negative space inside that handle. Okay, so I have the bright, the darker orange in there. And I'm going to come in and add some brighter orange as that dries. You could go either way with that. Okay. I think I'm going to zoom just a little for you. Okay. There we go. So again, brighter orange, rustier orange around the edges. The advantage of that undercoat is that it will make your colors, I think, pop a little more. It makes them a little more intense in the end. And also, um, it enables you to leave a little bit of space around and between your items if you so desire. I do enjoy doing an under underpainting sometimes. Okay, here we go. Almost done with that. So please feel free to experiment with your color. You might be wanting to um, paint your paintings so they match your decor at home. And if you're particular about, um, you know, if you prefer certain shades or colors, please change up the design to suit yourself. Experiment with it and have fun. That's what it's all about. All right, there we go. Okay, so I really like that background. I'm probably going to come in and add more of that vivid orange as, as it dries. Okay, so I'm going to rinse this brush. And I'm going to um, switch over right now to my number six round. If you paint with me frequently, you know it's one of my favorite brushes. All right, so I'm going to zoom back out so that you can see when I flip this around. Okay, so I'm going to start with the white. So uh, the teapot lid is white, and I'm just going to paint that in. Turn this. Okay, I'm going to smooth those brush strokes out. And I'm going to go right, not on the rim of the lid, but below it on the first stripe. And I'm going to get that base coated also. You could use a flat brush for this as well. Use what you're most comfortable with. down. By the way, you do want your undercoat to be dry before you start your painting. Okay. So while that's drying, I'm going to move over to the handle, which I'm also painting in the titanium white. 
And we will be putting a second coat on all of these white areas and that's when I'm going to go ahead and shade and add some dimension. But for now I'm just getting the first layer in. Spout is also going to be white, and the bottom of the teapot. So I'm going to use the round brush up here. Okay, then I'm going to grab that same flat brush, and I'm going to go ahead and finish the base coating. I do want to try to keep the brush strokes smooth if possible. And I'm bringing the brush strokes down to help shape that spout. Alright, base of the teapot. Do that in white also. did get my brush in a little bit of orange um, just you know in my movement there on my palette so there's a little tinge of orange in my white I don't really think it's very noticeable though okay so there we go that's base coated it might dry fairly quickly today. Okay, it needs a little touch right there. Okay. Alright, I'm going to go back to the top of the lid here because it's actually almost dry. And I'm going to take more titanium white and I'm going to start putting some more on that part. And while it's wet, I'm going to take a little tiny bit of burnt umber. And I'm just going to put it here on the edge. Wipe my brush on my towel. And then just very lightly kind of bring it across. I don't want to make it very brown, so I'm going to do even less on the other side. You can always add, but it's kind of difficult to take away, so we're going to go and just add a little bit at a time. Okay, now I'm going to wipe that brush off, get some more titanium white, put it in here. We're actually going to put our high, our shading in, I think, with the um, angle brush today. So I'm just going to go ahead and lay another, another layer on here. Try to do it quickly for you. Now you can also use a white called Blockout White which is more heavily pigmented and will cover um, probably better and more like in one coat or just it's a little more heavy heavy bodied than this I'm not worried about going right to the edge I have a lot of shading that's going to take care of that. I 
again, you can change to your flat brush whenever it feels comfortable for you. I'm going to change to the flat brush for the base of the teapot. I'm going to get another, another layer in there. Okay, that's smooth enough. I'm going to stop there. Now again, um, on the teapot lid, you can add the brown as you paint your second layer or you can come back in and shade it. So I've decided I'm gonna go back in and shade it and um, we'll do that soon. And I'm gonna use that angle brush. So let's go ahead and base coat the rim of the lid and also the center okay and I'm going to draw a flower in the center and um, I've decided to just put it on after so I'm going to paint this whole area and I'm going to use phthalo blue and a little burnt umber and some white so I'm going to mix that on my palette till I get a more muted blue that I love. So mix it or use a premix color if you prefer. Just get a color that you really like. And what I'm going to do is paint with my um, number six round, I'm just going to paint the top of the teapot, the little knob. And then I'm going to do the rim and then the center. So I'm choosing this pretty blue, a little bit of burnt umber in with phthalo blue and a little bit of white. Okay. Before those dry, I'm going to wipe my brush on my paper towel, grab a little bit of titanium white, and I'm just going to put some in here in the knob and just kind of blend it in a little bit. And I'm going to put some here in the center of the rim. Just kind of blend it out a little. Okay, I'm going to leave it like that. Okay, for the middle, I'm going to switch to the flat brush. Definitely going to have to mix up a little more, a little more paint. Now, if you prefer to buy colors that are pre-mixed, and you, if you don't care for mixing, you know, you can buy whatever brand and whatever premix color that you like. I just, whoops, I just like the um, canvas paints because of their blendability and I enjoy mixing. I think it's fun. I have to straighten out what I just did there. So that rim is going to be narrower. Is that a word? It's going to be more narrow than what I originally drew because I'm just compensating with the paint for where I just slipped a little bit. Okay. I also enjoy brush mixing right on the canvas and getting um, just some variations in the color. I'm okay with that. If you like it, if you rather have it, you know, always, always exactly the same, just make sure you mix enough so that you won't have to um, mix more as the project goes on. Okay, so while that's drying, I'm gonna grab a little bit of titanium white on the dirty brush, and I'm just going to brush a little bit in the center. and Make it a little bit brighter right there. Okay. 
And as that dries, we're going to shade our edges with some burnt umber also. Okay, so that's that's looking good. That's looking the way I want it. I'm going to grab a little bit of the darker color and put it on the edge and just kind of blend lightly. So as I blend, I'm using a very, very light touch. Kind of like a feathery touch. Okay. All right. There we go. So while that's drying, uh, let's go back to that background. I want to dip back into my Vivid Red Orange and I'm going to place some more here near the teapot and I'm just going to blend it out onto the rest of the canvas. I'm leaving uh, the darker part of the background showing around behind the teapot. I see um, something I have to adjust there, but we'll come back to that. All right. So again, I'm leaving it a little darker behind the teapot to create a shadow behind it. And I'm just blending out into the deeper rust color. And I'm going to go ahead and put some brighter orange in that negative space there inside the handle. It's a very transparent color, so it's easy to place on top and just kind of let it blend out into your background. Okay, I see when I drew my teapot, I kind of changed, changed the tip a little bit from what I had originally laid down. So I'm going to go back in and make that just a little bit longer. There. Might have to come touch up, touch that up again. Okay, so we have our basic um, base colors on right now, and we can start to work on it. I'm going to take the blow dryer and um, just dry it for just a couple of seconds here. All right. Just want to brighten that up a little bit. Okay. So now we're going to do a little bit of shading on the white. So I'm going to take the angle brush. I'm going to wet it. Touch it on my paper towel. I'm going to scooch this in so you can see it. I'm going to take the part of the brush that sticks out longer, the toe, they call it the toe and the heel, and I'm just going to blend it on my palette like this, back and forth, and then I'm going to take my little teapot, and with that color toward the top of the teapot and the clean end of the brush down on the teapot, I'm just going to come in and add some shading there. So I'm just going to smooth that out. Okay. I'm going to let that dry. If you try to shade the bottom of it now, your brush is going to mess into um, the area that's wet and you're going to get some smudges that you're probably not happy with. So let's go down to the rim. I'm going to do the outside edge of the rim. And we just want to make sure that that's very soft as it comes down. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing over here. With the point toward the outside. Okay. On the spout, I'm going to have my brush. Whoops. My knuckle was in some blue paint, wasn't it? As usual. <laughs> oh, those knuckles. Okay. We can fix that later. Let me clean those, clean that knuckle. Okay, 
So let's get that brown up against the teapot on the spout. And put some on the end. It's still a little wet there, so it's making a muddy color. Okay, so let's come down to the bottom. I can do the same thing. Get some more paint on the brush. Okay, so that gives us a little bit of shaping there. I'm going to come back and work on that spout some more. I'm going to grab some more burnt umber on the toe of that brush, blend it and blend it on the palette, and let's come in and put it on the handle where it touches the teapot and we can kind of walk the brush out a little bit. And I'm going to bring it right around and touch it where it touches the teapot there. So I just want to smooth that out now. Okay. So we just have to let it dry a little bit before we go back in with our brush because if you try to go in and shade another area while the area that you just did is still wet, your brush is probably going to touch that area and end up making um, kind of a divot or groove in your shading. So that's why we're just going to let that dry for now. We're going to go ahead and put the burnt umber on the edge of the blue. Should be nice and dry. So I'm using the burnt umber even on the blue parts because I just want this to look kind of um, a little bit on the rustic side. Put a little bit of, it's like an antique effect. Okay. And let's go ahead and do the same thing on the teapot. On the body of the teapot. I don't know if it's going to show up very much in the video, but um, basically we're just putting the brown there to give like a subtle antiquing to it. Okay, give it that more older rustic kind of look. Okay, that's good. Let's let that dry a little bit. This part is dry enough now that we can actually um, put some more I need to wet the brush a little bit, grab some more of that paint, and here underneath the blue I'm going to bring in some of that burnt umber to give it sort of that antique look. Okay, so you can, you can go back over and smooth out as long as it's very wet. Once it starts to dry, you don't want to go in and move paint around because it's going to mess up the nice smooth line that you have. So let's go ahead and do the top of the spout. And we're just going to keep going back and forth and touching the other areas. So basically we want a shadow or antique float color, whatever you want to call it, on each side of all of these different colors. So once this blue is dry, the shading on the side of the blue, then we'll come in and we'll work on this stripe also. But right now that's wet, so we're gonna leave it. I just keep stressing that because um, if you're not used to it, you wanna remember to stay off the wet areas. So there we go. Okay, the teapot, you're actually just seeing the side of the spout, so you really wouldn't see like the little hole in there um, based on the angle that we have it drawn. So I'm just going to go ahead and brighten that up a little bit because it was an afterthought. There we go. Okay. So that's drying a little bit. I'm going to go back on the handle and add in just a little more white 
in the middle. Okay, same thing with the top. I'm going to add a little more white just in the middle. Just kind of brighten that up a little bit. And pretty soon we can start the flower. Um, okay, that's almost dry enough for me to touch there. We don't want to do the polka dots till the very end because um, polka dots are something I definitely tend to get my knuckles in. So I wait and I do them at the end. Okay, I'm going to add the shading on the top and bottom of this band right here. So again, I'm going to turn it sideways to do under the top. And I'm going to come in like this. I'm not going to make it too dark, just kind of light. Now, I can't come in and do the bottom because I will just wipe away everything else that's there. I have to let it dry. So while that's drying, I'm going to do the bottom of the spout. Same thing, grab some burnt umber, come in. Just going to clean this. Okay. All right. So that's looking nice and antique -y. I'm going to let this dry. Then we're going to shade the band and draw the flower. So while that's drying, I'm going to show you how to make the steam. Um, I think that's kind of the fun part of this. So take your paper towel. I forgot to tell you at the beginning of the video that you would need a damp paper towel, wet and clean water, and scrunched up. And then just kind of... Um, Get your finger in there and leave it just a little bit messy like that, your paper towel. What we're going to do is create the steam coming out of this cute little teapot. So I'm going to dip this paper towel with my index finger in it into some white paint. And then I'm going to rub it off on the palette a little bit so I don't have too much paint. Or you could even take it to another paper towel and just kind of pounce it. You can always go back in and add more. So what I'm going to do is turn this so that I can imagine where the steam would be coming out. And I'm going to put, put it down. And just kind of create a little steamy area. And just let it trickle off the canvas. Okay, so there's the steam, and we want it to come out of the spout, remember. It's not really coming out of the top of the teapot, but it is circling around. Okay, so I'm going to grab just a little more white, just kind of pounce, and just gently, just gently rub your finger. Okay, so there's some steam. Then I took that. And I did the same thing at the bottom. Get some more white. I'm going to get a clean end and just kind of soften that. I don't want it too, too strong. Okay, so there's some steam at the bottom. Just because, because I thought it was cute and fun. You can eliminate it if you don't want it. Or you can just imagine it as a border more than some steam. Okay. Now, inside the steam, I decided to add some hearts because I really like hearts. So I'm going to um, just draw them on here. Okay, that's a little too wet, so can't draw them right now. Maybe on this one over here, maybe I can. So one... Two, and then maybe just a little one, three. Um, so while this area is drying a little bit, I'm going to take my number six round and I'm just going to paint these little hearts white. Now you can just use the tip of the brush to form the top of the heart by putting it down and just kind of wiggling it a little bit or pressing it out. So I actually like to do the tops and then flip it around and do the points 
and I know my hearts are lopsided. I do that intentionally. I like one side higher than the other. It's just the way I draw my little hearts usually. But you do whatever you like. And now I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to do the points. Okay. So up in here, maybe the um, regular lead pencil will work better. So we've got one coming out sideways, one coming out over here and do whatever you want with this um, so I've got three and then I'm going to do four and then five and they're going to get smaller as they go up so let's go ahead and we're going to do the same thing here I'll zoom this in hopefully I won't forget to zoom back out for you okay so let's go ahead we're going to start with the top one and we're going to just make the top of it. And we're probably going to have to come in and do another coat too. If you want them bright. If you want them more subtle, then you can let that background color show through a little. Okay, now I'm going to turn it so that I can get at the points more easily. I'm going to make the bottom. Okay, super cute. As it dries, I'm probably going to come back in and, and make them a little bit more uh, of a bright white. White has a tendency to kind of disappear into the background as it dries. And I do, I love hearts, so I'm probably going to brighten all of them up. Alright, let's draw the flower. Now for the flower, I'm going to create a circle right here in the middle. And I'm going to draw it smaller than I want it to end up being. So I'm going to do about somewhere between maybe, well, about an inch all around. Okay. And then I'm going to draw some petals. So I'm going to draw one. And I'm just going to keep going around. And then you can come in and do some little back petals behind that. Okay, as for the leaves, I think I'm going to um, freehand them. All right. Before we work on that, now we can go back into the areas that we were um, waiting to dry. So I'm going to do the bottom of the stripe on the paw and get some burnt umber shading there. Okay. Any areas for the sides that might be missing, go ahead and put that in. Also, um, I want to make sure I have burnt umber down the sides. Whoops. I got into my white. So it's not an emergency if something like that happens. Just clean it up. Your base coat's dry and you can just clean it up like that. A little bit of water. Okay. Little dried pieces of white there. They're going to be stubborn. There we go. Okay. So I just want to make sure that we have burnt umber where we want it. Okay. And again, I'm kind of heavily 
antiquing this. This white pencil is running. Again, you can use um, you can use regular pencil, and it will show enough for you. Um, what's happening to me here is the chalk. The pencil is turning into chalk as I go. Okay, that's all right. We're gonna we want to highlight up the middle anyway. So, all right. Any areas that have too much light in them, you can come back in and add a little bit of the burnt umber. You can do that whenever, okay? All right. Let's get our flower base coated. So I'm going to start with the back petals, and basically I'm going to use the point of that brush to go in, and I'm just going to pull it, and I'm going to go right through the petals in front. Don't worry about that right now. Okay, so just go ahead and make your petals. You can keep turning it around. Then we're going to have to let it dry a little bit. We'll do some more back petals in there. They can be little skinny petals. I'm going through the front petals and just bringing them to the center. Okay. And remember, when you're painting a flower, it does not have to be perfectly symmetrical either. Okay? Okay. The white is just going to have to um, be blow-dried here so that I can keep moving forward for you. And we're going to be coming in with that angle brush for shading. So I'm going to go and strengthen the white a little bit. You can make your petals rounded on the end or pointed, whatever you'd like. You know what, let's stick another one right there. Even if you want your petals to be a different color, um, like yellow or something, you're probably going to want to put a white base coat down under it so that um, they'll be able to be vibrant against the blue. Okay. All right, I'm going to dry those for a moment. All right, so now we're going to create the other petals that are in the front. We're going to go right through the back ones. So we're just going to pull right through them. Okay, and they're going to be set back by doing that. So we're going to come in here, just come and pull it down toward the center. You don't have to be neat in the middle. Okay, so we're just going to pull, pull. Pull, pull, and I'm going right through the back petals. Okay, so there we go. That's our base. a little bit of uh, white there so I'm going to get some burnt umber and I'm going to come in and just antique that a little bit and leave the white underneath it there we go okay all right so we have to let the flower dry before we can continue working on it so while um, it's drying 
we'll go ahead and we'll work on some of the leaves. So I'm going to take my number six round brush. Okay, this is my favorite number six. And I'm going to take some yellow, some of my chrome yellow or your cadmium yellow, medium or light, whatever you're using, the green oxide, and I'm going to mix it into a lime green. I'm going to add a little bit of white to that mixture. Make this as bright as you like. And then I'm going to come in and I'm just going to draw some little leaves here and there. Okay. Some are going to come out of the flower. Some are going to be out beyond the flower. So I'm just using the brush and making two strokes near each other. Very, very simple. Just putting the brush down and pull and pull. Nothing fancy. Okay. And you will need to add a little bit of white here and there to get them to pop. We'll come in and we'll add more color. Um, I think I want a little bit at the bottom. I have to watch myself so I don't get carried away because I love to paint flowers. And this is just like painted on the teapot. So, all right happy with that. I'm going to stroke some more white at the tips of these flowers, brighten them up a little bit, and then we'll dry it and I'll show you how to shade them. How you shade is going to determine which petals are in the front and which petals are in the back, really. So, um, you know, it's all going to be determined by the paint. Okay, that'll be bright enough for now. All right. We still need to let that dry, so I'm going to go ahead and make the stems because that's something I can do without disturbing the rest of the design. So I'm going to wet my liner brush. I have a number two script. It's old as the hills, and I'm telling you, it has held up beautifully. All the paint has peeled off the handle, but look at those bristles. All right, so I'm going to dip uh, my brush in water and kind of water down the lime green that I made. And I'm just going to come in and make some connecting stems. Okay. I will zoom this. All right, so let's see. Going to um, go ahead and pull some stems. Okay, I'm using the lighter color because I'm working on a dark blue. Um, if you choose a light color, you might want to use a darker green, which you could use your green oxide or whatever green you're using. You can add a little burnt umber to it. Okay, so now let's get this side. One, two, three. Okay, so let's take a look. Okay, I like that. I might throw a couple little tendrils in there. Okay, as that dries, we can then just come in and add more of that brighter green. You see, I'm just kind of tipping one side of those leaves with just some of that green. Come in and brighten it. And um, you can always add just a little more white. Love, love, love to paint flowers. I think when you just paint a bunch of flowers, you can really just let yourself go. And um, just let your brush be loose and just kind of have fun with it. I think we'll have to do um, a tutorial on just a field of flowers. All right. 
You could throw a few little tendrils in there if you wanted. Maybe one over here. Okay, that's it. All right, so let's go in and let's shade the flower. I'm going to use burnt umber, but just a little bit of it. So I'm going to tip my brush in burnt umber, and again, I'm going to blend it on that palette. And I'm going to come in and just shade the petals that are underneath, okay, or, or behind. So I'm going to stay off of the biggest petals that are in front for now. So I'm going to come in. This one is in the back, so I'm going to put some shading on it. This one's in the back. Now, you might not be able to shade both sides of the petal at one time. It depends on um, if you're able to kick up the end of that brush. If not, just do one side and then come back and do the other side after, like we've been doing, so that the other side can dry. Okay, so we're going to let that dry a little. I'm going to put this bigger petal in the front, so I'm going to come down and shade a little bit down the side of that one. Okay, definitely let that dry a tiny bit. You know what, I'm going to have to take the blow dryer out anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the polka dots in, um, in the teapot. So you can use a stylus or you can use the tip of your pencil. So in case you don't have a stylus, I'm going to show you just how to do it just using the tip of your pencil. So just your regular pencil. I'm going to dip straight into my titanium white and I'm going to add some polka dots. Now, if you want them exactly the same size, you'll need to um, wipe your pencil or your stylus between every single dot. I'm okay with my dots being different sizes. And I feel like this really brightens up the teapot. Again, if you're not going to use a blow dryer, uh, you might want to wait and do the polka dots at the very end. I just try to space them out where it's pleasing to my eye. I might want them just a little bigger than that. So here. All right, I think that's good. Okay, I'm going to take my number six round because my finger made a little smush over here in the green. And it's not going to come off easily, I don't think. Oh yeah, there it goes. It's partially dry. So it made a little divot here, but I think it adds a highlight. I like the way it looks, so I'm going to leave it. All right. So we're going to go ahead and do a little bit more uh, shading in the flower, just a little bit. So I want to shade around the front petal. So I'm going to take a little bit of burnt umber again, side load it blend it on my palette, and I'm just going to shade behind the big petals that are going to be in front. And I might need to go in and strengthen them again with some white. Okay, this one. All right, so that looks good. Now, um, Let's go ahead and add a little bit of white to some of these flowers, too. White kind of disappears into your background.
and this one needs a little bit more. White is one of those things I just keep coming back in and adding and adding, it seems, as the painting's drying. And I just keep coming in and adding more of it. So you can do the same. All right, that's pretty good. Make that one just a little bigger. Okay, so for the center, we're going to use a scruffy brush. And um, I didn't call that out at the beginning of the video, but I will add it to the description. So we're going to use a scruffy old brush, and I pounce it up and down just to make it um, just even more uh, fluffy. I'm going to dip straight into my burnt umber, and I'm going to pounce it straight up and down on my palette. I want a lot of paint, but I want it mostly on the tip of the bristles, and maybe if I tip this up, you'll see a little better. So I'm going straight straight up and down. And what I'm going to do is let those bristles pounce out onto my flower. Okay? And I'm going to turn it around. Now, you can use any brush that you'd like for this. Um, something that's kind of flared out. Or you can use a deer foot stippler. Whatever your favorite pouncing brush is. And by just leaving it on the tips and using a very, very light touch... I'm letting some of the bristles go out onto the flower and create a fluffiness of like pollen. Okay, so that's getting thick there, so I'm going to stop. I'm going to take my number six round and just kind of soften a couple of those blobs. Okay. While that's wet, I'm going to take my round brush and dip into some titanium white. And I'm going to come in and just gently tap. Now, I'm not pouncing. I don't want to ruin the brush. I'm just tapping. And I'm going kind of heavily around the top part, okay, like an arc. And as I come down the sides, I'm just coming down thinner. So it's more like, a, almost like a sideways, upside down crescent. I want the, um, the dots to come down and just get skinnier down here. And just be more broad up at the top of the flower. And see how you like that. And you can always come in and take a little bit of brown with your white. And kind of finish the middle here with softer mix of your burnt umber and white. Okay. All right. So one other thing that you might want to do, it's almost done, um, but you might want to brighten up those leaves on one side. So I'm going to take some of my yellow. I'm going to come in. Maybe I'll add to that mix with the yellow and the... Um, the green. I'm just going to add a little bit of white. I'm going to come in and just make the, the tips of these leaves a little brighter. Make sure you add a little white. So you can see how that side is popped a little bit more. Let's zoom in a little for you. So I'm going to add just a little more white just to show you. Okay, a little bit of white, what that does. Compare that to this side, and you can see a difference, I think. Um, so just add some. You know, make yourself happy with this. If you want it brighter, make it brighter. If you want to go back and shade with some darker down at the base of the leaves, you can do that too. If you wanted to add a little um, tinge of yellow to your flowers, you can take a little bit of your yellow also and just come in and add a little tiny bit like that. So I'm just taking a little tiny bit on the brush and just kind of gently placing it in there. Um, that does add a little bit if you like that. I'm using the tiniest amount. 
And I will be coming in and adding some more white on the tips of these. So I'm just going to continue with that. I think I'll be adding that also. Okay. Adding a little white in there and, you know, several times is just going to give your flower more dimension. Okay. Um, one thing that I still needed to do is go ahead and brighten up these, these hearts. Again, it really is easier to do the tops than flip it around and do the bottom. Use the shape of that brush to help you. and do these points. Okay. All right. this back up a bit so you can take a look at the whole painting. Here we are. All right. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, go ahead if you did and hit the like button and you can also subscribe and take advantage of my weekly tutorials. Again, thank you so much for joining me. This is Arvo with Michelle. Have a wonderful day.